On this edition of Titans All Access, Anthony Ferkser goes from role player to show stopper in the win over Houston. Amy Wells gets number 86's reaction after his career day. Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry made NFL history at Nissan Stadium. And Dave McGinnis goes beneath the surface to show us how they did it. And John Robinson gives us a scouting report for Sunday's showdown between the unbeatens. It's the last weekend in October, so the weather's cooling down. But Tennessee is heating up. Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. We welcome you to Titans All Access. This is Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. And guess what? We're 5-0. and oh. We're 5-0. and oh. We're 5-0. and oh. That's us. We're 5-0. and oh. The Titans are too. And that's the good news. That's why <laughs> we're 5-0. and oh, Because the Titans beat Houston 42-36 to 36 in overtime. 100th win all time at Nissan Stadium. We got our money's worth. We got our money's worth. An all-time record for total yardage, 601 yards. You score a touchdown with four seconds to go to force overtime, and then you win it with Derrick Henry in the King Cat. My heart's beating fast just talking about it. What an awesome game at Nissan Stadium for all of those reasons and so many more. You know, it's so funny because I remember the first one when they beat Cincinnati, 36-35, nine points in the last five minutes, a game-winning field goal, exciting day, and the 100th win, uh, even more exciting because of how it went down, especially with it being a division rival. Uh, the division thing is good. The win is even better. Being 5-0 and is the icing on the cake. <sighs> I love this Titans team. All right, so one more recap from Nissan Stadium. Reaction from the Titans to the big win and being 5-0. 5-0. 5-0. 5-0. AFC games are huge. AFC South games, they mean everything. Texans won the toss, elected to defer, so the Titans going to get the ball. Texans jumping around on defense. Tannehill drifts into the shotgun. Tannehill looking, looking, firing, completing, scoring. Touchdown, Titans! Tannehill, the magic man with the magic hand to Berkshire for the big six. Throwing complete, Brown at the three, at the two, at the one, in the end zone. Touchdown! Tannehill improvises with A.J. Brown. Tannehill to throw it. There's Humphreys at the five. Humphreys in the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! Tannehill taking them to school. Derrick Henry carried the ball 13 times for 85 yards in the first half. He had his two longest runs of the season, 34 and 18 yards. Give it to Henry. Looking for some room, finds it, 10. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, wow! 35, 30, 25, yes! 20, 15, 10, 5, end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, 94 yards. Touchdown, Titans! He is the baddest man in the NFL! So the Titans have 105 seconds, one timeout, and they need a touchdown. So it is an uphill climb for the Titans. Here we go. This group's done it before. Let's go. Floats it short. McNichols with a catch at the 12. McNichols is down to the seven yard line. Titans trying to get on the ball. 12 seconds and counting. It's second down and one. Nine seconds and counting. Tannehill throws the fade. Left corner for Brown. He caught it. Touchdown, Titans! A.J. Brown beats Roby. Yes! It will have to survive review to make sure he got his feet down. But the Titans, as of now, are within a point. So the Titans will get the football. Deshaun Watson won the opening toss. He lost that one. If the Titans go score a touchdown right here, this game is over. Trying to keep undefeated alive and win their 100th at Nissan Stadium. It's never easy in the National Football League. 
So Derrick Henry is back in play now. He should be very fresh. He has not run the ball since the 94-yard touchdown. Correct. Tannehill, play fake, throws Henry on the right side, 25-30, 35-40, 45-50, 45-40, puts a move on 35 to the 30, and he is taken down at the 28-yard line, making the 27. That play good for 53 yards and a first down for the Titans. A.J. Brown wide to the left. Tannehill is wide to the left. Henry is in the gun. Okay. It's the King Cat. Henry running to the left. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Titans. Go. Titans win. 42 to 36. As Arthur Smith comes with the King Cat for the final five yards and the victory. It's not the Wildcat, because that, ladies and gentlemen, is the king. Oh, I couldn't agree more. They had to fight for everything they had to score with four seconds to go to send it to overtime, and they win it. Final score, Tennessee 42, Houston 36, as in overtime at Nissan Stadium. The Titans get it done again. Good to be 5-0, but this week you play another 5-0 team. You know the Pittsburgh Steelers are 5-0 for the first time since 1978? That was a long time ago, Mike. They won the Super Bowl that year, by the way. They won their third Super Bowl title. It shows just how hard it is to be 5-0 in this league. We'll preview it and get a scouting report from General Manager John Robinson when Titans All Access returns. Titans All Access continues with the scouting report brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. We're joined by General Manager John Robinson. John, thanks as always for taking time. Yeah, good to be with you guys, Mike. All right, let's talk about your opponent this week, the Steelers, giving up 66 yards per game rushing. Why have the Steelers been so good against the run? Well, they got dudes, Mike. I mean, it's a formidable front. I mean, you go across the entire uh, front seven, uh, whether it's Dupree, Watt, Tuit, Alu Alu, Hayward, Vince Williams. I mean, these guys, they're, they're big, they're strong, they play with good technique. Uh, they're going to blitz you. You know, they're, they're going to send pressure, try to get you second and third in long situations. But they're good players. It's going to be a tall task for us. 24 sacks for the Steelers defense. Who really leads that pass rush? Yeah, again, pick a winner up front. You know, it starts, uh, Dupree is, is fast off the edge. Watt's fast off the edge. They got a great combination of moves. They've got speed to dip and lean around you. Uh, they can convert that speed rush to power. Hayward and it on the inside. You know, both of those guys are long, they're strong, they get their hands up. And they've been playing together for a while. You know, so in those, those twist games, those pass rush games, they have a really good feel for each other uh, and what to anticipate when the ball snap. So it's typical Steelers, it's everybody. Exactly. Let's move to offense and let's talk about the run game. The Steelers have that going again, rushing for 137 yards per game, led by James Conner. Yeah, I mean, they got a top 10 rushing attack. They got a big O-line up front. Their receivers do a really good job blocking support. But Conner, you know, he's a big back with with quickness, got loose hips. He's a really patient back. Uh, he lets his blocks develop. He's got an excellent vision to see where he's supposed to run. He anticipates things well. Um, he takes care of the football. And, you know, he didn't time real fast in the 40 at the combine. But as we all know, none of that really matters, you know, once you put the helmet on. Because uh, he's got speed. He's got burst in the open field to go to distance. How have the Steelers improved their receiving core as a whole since the last time the Titans faced Pittsburgh? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, Big Ben being back, that that certainly helps. Coach Tomlin and Kevin, they've done a great job uh, historically with that position group over the years, and, and it's no different now. You know, they've got uh, Juju is back. He plays inside, he plays outside. He's an excellent runner. He's a great run after the catch player. They've got a speedy you know, run after the catch player in Deontay Johnson. Washington out of Oklahoma State. He's been in the league, been up there for a couple years. He's an excellent vertical threat. And then the rookie Claypool is off to a fast start. We liked him coming out of the drafts as well. A big, fast, strong hands, good with the ball in his hands. And they added Ebron, pass catching tight end, who, who we're familiar with when his time at Indy in free agency. You know, you got all of those weapons coupled with a future Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, it's a challenge. 
This is the game of the week in the National Football League this weekend. Exactly where the Tennessee Titans want to be. Big game at home, Nissan Stadium, big atmosphere. We're ready for it, Mike. We're ready for it. All right. John Robinson is the Titans general manager providing us with this week's Farm Bureau scouting report. When we come back, Coach Dave McGinnis takes a look at a Titans one-two punch like never seen before. Stay tuned. Got a question for Titans head coach Mike Vrabel? You can ask on Twitter by sending it to at Titans Radio. We pass along all of your questions to the big man each Monday night at 6 Central on the Mike Vrabel Show. So send in those questions to the coach at Titans Radio on Twitter. And the Titans went over Houston. Ryan Tannehill threw for 364 yards and Derrick Henry rushed for 212 yards. Amy Wells, did you know that they are the first teammates in NFL history to throw for over 350 and rush for over 200 in the same game. You know, Mike, I did not know that. That's a nice little tidbit. But it makes sense that Dave McGinnis broke them down together. So let's throw to Coach Mack on this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. We're going to watch today the first team in NFL history to have a passer throw for 350 plus yards and a rusher to rush for 200 plus yards in the same game. First play we're going to look at is 1134 in the third quarter. The thing that's so great about this is Ryan Tannehill was distributing the football to various receivers during this record setting performance. The running back setting off to the quarterback's left. You see a little motion outside to a numbers plus split. Look at the defense widen out a little bit and then watch Ferkser get right down the middle of the scene. He's running right to the opposite railroad track. This play was set up by the wide receiver motioning out to the sideline and then watch the disbursement as they move out in a zone defense. It gives you a little bit more operating room in the inside. Perfect throw, great protection, big, big play. The next play we're going to look at is 937 in the fourth quarter, first and 10. Now we motion back into a slot set, tight slot. There are nine men on the line of scrimmage. This play is going to start with an outside zone to the heavy side. Watch Derrick Henry, great vision, stick his foot in the ground, cut back to the open side. Watch the blocks on the open side. Then watch Henry get that stiff arm redirected from high to low, and then look at the 21.62 mile per hour speed for big man running. The next play we're looking at with four seconds left in the fourth quarter, Ryan Tannehill very calmly walks up to the line of scrimmage, doesn't worry about spiking the football. Watch this, very definitive where he's gonna throw out here to A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown goes up, really strong combat catch with his hands, drags both feet down, Critical, critical play, made with great confidence and without any panic on the part of the Titans. In overtime, Tannehill goes through his progressions, one, two, swing it out over here to Henry. Here he goes down the sideline, outruns the first one, makes one move, come back to the inside. Tremendous flip of field position in overtime. Last play we've got is 6.30. Arthur Smith makes a very, very great call here. Look what he does. He splits Ryan Tannehill out. All of a sudden now, Henry is standing back there as the quarterback in the King Cat formation, takes the football, watch him pause and wait, let his blocking get up in front of him. Look at the block by Anthony Ferkser. Tremendous block at the point. Henry puts his blade down, barrels into the end zone. Touchdown Titans, Titans win. What a tremendous, tremendous victory and also coinciding with record setting performance. Want to get a question in for the OTP crew? Send us your OTPQ. Just go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and ask your question. When Mike, Amy, Coach Mack, and Jim convene for the OTP, they'll give you an answer. That address again to submit your questions is TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Welcome back to Titans All Access. We love to tell good stories on this show, and this week's Nissan Insider features one of those stories as our Amy Wells had a chance to talk with Anthony Ferkser right after the Titans were able to knock off Houston on Sunday, 42 to 36. Anthony Ferkser is a great story. 
He was a tryout player who has worked his way up from the practice squad to become a big part of the Titans team. And as Ferkser tells Amy, being part of a good team is very special. We told you that we all in, you fold up, it's all over, those up in the culture, the way that we live, every day it pays off, from the bank to the crib, cause we have rollers, we told you that we gotta win, you know us, we play the rush, I'm all in for this life, gotta chase the sun, I keep a straight face even when I'm under the gun, yeah. Anthony, I want to start by asking you about the day you had against the Houston Texans. You had over 100 receiving yards. Are you starting to feel like you're a primary threat within this Titans offense? Yeah, I mean, I'm just excited to be able to like, find a role for the offense and be able to be in the spot when Ryan needs me. Yeah, it just so happened that I got a couple extra targets this game. And I mean, yeah, I was excited to just have a big role in the win. What is it about Ryan Tannehill's leadership that makes this team so successful in high pressure situations? Yeah, I mean, he does a great job calming everyone down and just having that trust in the huddle that we know we can win the game no matter what the situation. Yeah, everyone's in there trusting each other and just executing what we do in practice and what we've done in past couple games. And we know we can come out on top. We just do the right thing. How does your preparation throughout the week, whether it be in practice or meetings, help prepare you for those high pressure, stressful situations? Yeah, I think Coach Rabel does a great job of kind of going through as many situations as he can. I know there's millions of different situations, but he does a great job giving us time and practice to watch it in film or kind of give us practice reps on different situations, whether it's X amount of time on the clock, timeouts. So yeah, we feel like we've run these similar situations in practice and we just go out there and execute. Tight ends are a major part of this Titans offensive scheme. What does that say to you about Arthur Smith and how much he trusts all the guys in that room to get the job done? Yeah, I think Arthur coming from a tight ends position and coaching a lot of us prior to being the coordinator. I mean, yeah, he feels like he has trust in us. And um, yeah, Todd did a great job stepping up at that tight ends coach role. He just gets us in the right play, able to coach us to know what we gotta do, know how we can execute, gives us all the tools we need. Yeah, if we're just able to keep being productive, um, yeah, we'll just keep coming our way. The Titans have come out on top in a lot of close victories. As a player, how much confidence does that give you in the entire system that you're running that this stuff actually works? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've seen it time in and time out, game after game, that we've been successful and able to come out with the win. So, I mean, we're on the sidelines and the defense is out there, the offense is out there. We're cheering and we are have faith that they're going to be able to get the job done to have us execute and win the game. Does it take a little bit longer to get over a close victory? Do you need a little bit longer to celebrate, longer than maybe just 24 hours? Um, no, I think we have a, yeah, we have a great mentality in this, in the locker room where we just looking at one game at a time and after Sunday we win that game I mean we're looking at next week and just kind of focused on that we know not to look in the past and not to get too high not to get too low. How good does it feel to be 5-0 and right now? Yeah it feels good I think we put ourselves in a good situation but there's still a lot more games left in the season and we got to keep improving each week. What sets this 2020 team apart from some of the other Titans teams that you've been a part of? I think just more there's more confidence and trust. I mean, we've been running the same offense and similar defense schemes and just being able to trust each other and communicate and just have that type of camaraderie on the team is, yeah, just gives us all the confidence in the world. When Titans All Access returns, Amy Wells is back here with me and I've got some keys to this week's game with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Stay tuned. The next Titans All Access is our Halloween edition. So let's get scary with a monster, Derrick Henry. We feature number 22's best moments from 2020 and get his thoughts on what's to come over the last 10 weeks of the season. Plus, it's on to Cincinnati. We cover all of that and more on the next Titans All Access. Mike Keith, we've reached the portion of the program where you give your keys to beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hit us with the first one. Improve on defense, third down, and red zone. Those are two areas that are key. The Titans' third down defense and red zone has not been good enough through the 5-0 start. 
They need to get off the field on third down against the Steelers. And if the Steelers get inside the Titans 20, got to make them kick field goals. Two areas where if the Titans defense improves, this entire team improves. All right, give me another key. Got to run the ball. We talked with John Robinson earlier in the show about the fact the Steelers only give up 66 yards per game rushing. Doesn't make any difference. The Titans must find a way to run it because it's part of who they are. It's part of what they do. It sets up play action. They must run the football no matter how good the Steelers are. They got to find a way. All right, one more key to beating the Steelers. I think it's the Buffalo plan. And when the Titans beat the Bills just a few days ago, they got themselves short fields for their offense. They took advantage of every opportunity and they made no big mistakes. That's how you're beating a good team like the Steelers. When you get those opportunities, when you play clean, you get a chance to win a big game like this. They need the same type of performance they gave in that Tuesday night win over Buffalo. Mike Keith, this game against the Steelers at Nissan Stadium is going to be so much fun. So much fun, absolutely, and we'll have it for you on Titans Radio. Kickoff is set for 12.02 Central Time. Amy Wells and I and everybody else with Titans Radio on the air at 11 a.m. Central with Titans Countdown. As they like to say, check your local listings and listen to us call the game on Titans Radio. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We appreciate you joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time. Mike, we're 5-0. Oh. Got to be 6-0. Oh. Yeah. Let's get it.